Welcome to the official YouTube channel for the Colin Coward Podcast. Go on, hit the subscribe button. There you go, right down there. If you wanna be among the first to hear my weekly takes, NFL, college football, more, right there. J-Mac on our show today, The Herd FS1, brought up a really interesting point. He's very good at this because he's got a lot of contacts with agents and stuff. So here's Jim Harbaugh just continually saying J.J. McCarthy is the best player in the draft. I mean, this guy is unbelievable. <laughs> well, as he brought up today, Minnesota is poised to move up. Every rumor on every board is Minnesota's moving up. They've accumulated two first picks. Well, they don't want to move up to first, second, or third probably because then you'd have to give up multiple ones, you know, for a college player. Um, but you could move up to five with the Chargers – and probably get J.J. McCarthy because we we don't believe, unless the Giants move up spots to go to Arizona spot, it really is very, nobody, Chicago's not given up their pick. I don't think Washington's given up their pick. Now, New England's open for business at three, but I, I think there's some misgivings with Jaden Daniels' size, uh, some of his style of play, to put him up in New England in that weather. My guess is, it, so J-Mac said what they're doing basically is Harbaugh saying how great McCarthy is. Because if you like J.J. McCarthy, he'd be a reach at one, two, or three. But at five, if he is a reach, it's not a huge reach if he's projected to be 9, 10, 11, 12. And all Harbaugh is doing is saying, oh, this guy's great. He wants you to spend more to get his fifth pick. And I thought, yeah, that's exactly what he's doing, right? Well, Adam Peters told the local guys today they're not open for business. They've listened, but they that's were never Washington open for business. Washington's that's Washington's GM. I, I do think the Patriots saying that here's the problem for the Chargers. Ideally, they would love to do that deal, right? 11, 23, maybe next year's two big haul kind of help reset their roster. Monty Austin Fort, the Arizona Cardinals GM said, we have flashing lights open for business, right? Flashing lights. Gerard Mayo said within the last 24 hours, we're open for business too. If, if teams trade up before the Chargers, it takes two to tango. Teams often say, hey, we wanted to move back or we wanted to move forward. We, we couldn't get a yes on the other end of the line. What if quarterbacks and teams trade, either the Patriots take a guy or trade back, and the Giants and the Vikings take three and four? What happens to the Chargers if they get stuck there? Because I, I have a hard time, Colin, envisioning them, and I know these wide receivers are viewed very highly, and I know they just got rid of two. Google Jim Harbaugh's history. And his GM just came from the Ravens. They, they would much more be inclined to take a lineman. Yeah. That's more yeah. their style high in the draft. But they already have a left tackle. Googling alt, he's only played on the left yeah. side. I think it's a little rich for the Oregon State guy who's more of a, a right tackle potentially. Yeah. They already have two defensive linemen, but you could always take a defensive lineman. I don't think there's a guy viewed as a number five overall pick in this draft at that spot. They could get stuck pretty quickly. Now, they could just take a wide receiver. Do you envision a Ravens GM and Jim Harbaugh taking a wide no. receiver with the fifth no. overall pick? I, I can't. So I, can't. I, I have envisioned if they got, if the Chargers got Minnesota's picks and it was two firsts, my first thing I envisioned would be they move back to like, what is it, 11 or 12? What are the Vikings? 11? It's 11. My yeah. takeaway is that they would take the Oregon State tackle at 11, maybe a bit high, but he's a bruiser. And they could also use him on the interior if there are issues. And then I think their second pick would be a defensive tackle from like Texas or one of the big interior linemen. Right tackle, defensive tackle. And I'm like, that's exactly the how. And then they'd go get a center. They got two fourth round picks. They're going to get a center of the third or the fourth round. That's what that's what Jim wants to do. He wants to get big. You know, George Young, the legendary Giants GM, used to always say, when in doubt, go big. That hard, that's how Harbaugh yeah. and Baltimore and the Harbaugh's draft. They just go big a lot. Hell, I can make an argument. Zay Flowers is the first home run wide receiver hit that Lamar Jackson's had. Where you're, I mean, Odell didn't make any impact. Mark Andrews has been really the star of the receiving game. So, yeah, I, I'm with you. And, and they took him in the 20s. Yes. Right, the the Ravens, the Helodinadas, those types they take higher. Ronnie Stanley, Zay Flowers, are they, are they taking? Even though Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze are viewed as top ten, Marvin Harrison, I, I just I have a really hard time now. Maybe Marvin Harrison, he's seen him up close and personal. Maybe he feels very comfortable with that player, but I can't imagine that's what they want to do. But I can already envision them getting stuck because if 
if a quarterback goes one, two, three, four, whether that's trade ups, obviously Arizona would have to trade back, but let's say the Patriots even stay there. What if there's no one to trade with the Chargers? Well, yeah, you know, I, I so today the New York Giants, the Mara family said um, that they can draft a quarterback at number six. The Maras said they're they're they will allow the GM and the coach if they think it's necessary. Nice, nice them. of them to say you can draft a quarterback. <laughs> so I th- I think they will. I could see the Giants actually. Um, you know, my guess. I don't know if I do Jaden Daniels in that weather. I, I would ru- much rather have. So it, I th- don't we both agree it's going to go Caleb Drake May one and two. Do we agree with that? Pelissaro said today from the league meetings that he's heard a lot of JJ McCarthy with Adam Peters. And when you think of Adam Peters history, right? Even recently, they won a lot with Jimmy Garoppolo and then they had immediate success with Brock Purdy. Now, obviously these two guys are two of the best. I mean, Brady's the best player ever and Peyton Manning's a top five quarterback. He was around those guys in Denver and then New England. So prototypical. And the one guy that he completely whiffed on with the group was Trey Lance. So I wonder if they're more inclined. I I heard Drake may forever, but then when I saw that, I don't, I don't think that's just getting thrown around because if JJ could go four, what the hell's the difference of taking him two? If people like him at four or five, it's not crazy to think someone would like him at two, right? It's the same pick, essentially. So tell you either think the guy's a starting quarterback at a high level or right. not. Here's you as a former NFL scout with the Eagles. Take me inside. So I, I got into this thing today. I said Denver's in a weird spot. So are the Raiders. Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell can't be the future in that division. All right. But what if you have Bo Nix? At let's say twenty four, your scouts say we think he's the twenty four best player. Do I take him now? It's quarterback, and I do believe I'm willing to reach at pass rusher or quarterback. Receiver, I won't because there's a glut of talent. There's not a glut of receiver or quarterback talent annually in this league. Max Crosby fifth round is a complete outlier. Brady in the sixth round outlier. Yeah. So what do you do if your scouting department says, listen, we we have him like twenty four, twenty five. And we've got the 11th or the 12th pick of Denver on the Raiders. And, and, and I mean, what do you do? What, what's the discussion in the draft room? I saw a quote today from Joe Shane, the, the Giants GM, and he said what makes it very unique at the quarterback position. And Chris Ballard talked about this forever, right? Everyone always wanted me to take a quarterback. Well, if I don't like the guy at pick 18 or 15 or 20, just because he's quote-unquote falling, it's not a defensive lineman or a wide receiver, or a defensive back that I can mix in. He can just ultimately become my nickel corner. Or, you know, he didn't turn out to be a tackle, but he can be my guard. Or he can be my run-stuffing defensive tackle. Even if it clearly was the wrong pick, he can still... Quarterback's bad, he's (laughs) awful. And he just doesn't play. So I I think it gets very tricky about just because a guy, quote-unquote, is falling. Guys that falling and then are picked, it's because that when Aaron Rodgers fell to the Packers, they liked him a lot. Same with Jordan Love. Right, He felt other teams didn't like him, but they valued him and they took him. So I think if a quarterback is, quote, you know, if Bo Nick's there in the mid-teens, you either like the player or you don't at that value. And if you don't, you, you know, if you're unsure, I would never pick the quarterback because that's where you get in these positions where you're kind of stuck, where even these other, the Chargers wide receiver last year was a disaster. What well, you don't, it's like, well, we, maybe we figure something out. Maybe he becomes our third wide receiver. Maybe there are a couple things he that's can right. do well for. At quarterback, he either can play right. or he can't. And that's why J.J. McCarthy, I, I looked at some of their athletic testing numbers. Alex Smith was taller. I think there are a lot of similarities with Alex Smith. And once Alex got real coaching, Andy and Harbaugh, he was a really solid court. Never Josh Allen or Mahomes, but he was damn good you could make the playoffs with. And I think, and just because a guy has a high physical ceiling, Jaden Daniels, there's no guarantee so you have to like the guy, and then you have to be able to... Everyone puts the comps always like, this guy's the next Patrick Mahomes. I've been watching football for 30 years. I've seen one Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> remember remember when Draymond was drafted for uh, five straight years? Like, this guy's going to be the next Draymond. There hasn't been a Draymond <laughs> since. But no one ever wants to comp like, you know what? This guy might be Alex Smith. <laughs> because everyone always wants the guy to be a higher... In, in the sure. first round. You can do that with mid-round picks. But no one ever comps like, yeah, I think this guy's a third wide receiver. Well, we're taking the guy at 20. Like, that's a problem. So I, I think you got to be very careful with quarterbacks high in the draft. That's why I think teams get very comfortable when a guy falls to the second. You've seen a lot of success stories. Matt Schaub, Derek Carr, 
Jimmy Garoppolo. There's a lot less pressure. You don't have to play him right away. Let's face it. In modern day football, if I draft a guy, Raiders, Denver, in the top 15, no one wants to see Gardner Minshew or whoever, the Denver, Jared Stidham for long. Might give me a game or two, but just throw the other guy in. And that sometimes can just get yourself in a massive, massive problem. That's why J.J. McCarthy makes sense for Minnesota. They don't have to throw him in right away. Lamar Jackson, back in the day with uh, with the Ravens, they had Flacco, right? So he didn't he didn't start till the middle of the season, kind of got to ease in. Even Brock Purdy, and he was a seventh-round pick, but he wasn't forced into action right away. Some of these guys get forced into action. I don't care who you are. As a young person, your confidence is very, very brittle. I mean, you saw Bryce Young. He has another year like that. It could just ruin his right. career. 